one or more of those images was on the front page of every newspaper in the world. And I think that wasn't lost on Vignoli and Libeskin and somebody was going to win and this, therefore the stakes were unbelievably high and they wanted to win. So it did, it did get a little naughty. After Liebskin and Think are sort of selected as finalists, there was, um, you know, campaigns of, of, of muttering. You know, everybody wants to win. And, and, you know, if you're naive, you don't know what kind of forces are arrayed against you. There was not a minute that, that was just go relax, you know, meditating. It, it was a constant, passionate, sort of a struggle. I mean, the kind of things, you know, the sort of Rovian political tactics taken into the world of architecture and being propagated by amateurs. So it was a good time for all. It was blood sport, and you know, these guys were going for the biggest prize that architecture had ever seen. And there was a lot at stake for that. Liebskin had chosen to leave the pit empty, preserved as a memorial. So his opponents started whispering that, that it was a pit of death and an open grave and kind of, you know, there's a lot of ways to see how that gesture could be perceived as inappropriate. And then the, the think team went, uh, you know, very high up in the air with these open steel kind of Eiffel Towers. So the Liebskins started saying that there were skeletons in the sky. 